Close your eyes and watch your breath. Try to get the mind centered right here, right where you feel the breath coming in and out. And ask yourself, does it feel comfortable? If it doesn't feel comfortable, you can change. You can make it longer, shorter, faster, slower, heavier, lighter, deeper, more shallow. Try to see what the body needs right now. We're commemorating a John Sawat's passing today. Sixteen years ago, he passed away. And we think about all the good that he's done for us. Without him, we wouldn't have what metta. We, he set a good example for us. He set the schedule. He set the principles by which we've been practicing ever since. So we owe him a huge debt of gratitude. And as the Buddha said, you, you pay his your debt of gratitude to the Buddha by practicing in the same way that John Sawat. You think of his teachings and you put those teachings into practice. That's why we have the monastery to begin with. One of the teachings he commented on was, there's a phrase in Thailand that can be translated as, don't be self-centered. And he says, that's not quite right. There's an unskillful way of being self-centered, but there's also a skillful way of being self-centered. The unskillful way is if you just go by your moods, whatever mood comes in your mind, you don't think about the consequences, you decide you want something, you just go for it. You don't think about how it affects other people. But then again, you're harming yourself if you do that. So if you're really self-centered in a wise way, you think about the consequences of your actions. The only thing you realize is that if your search for happiness involves harming other people, they're not going to let you be happy. They're going to do what they can to undermine and destroy your happiness. So you have to look for happiness in a way that thinks about the consequences and is not harmful to anybody at all. And that way you're wisely self-centered. Because you're looking after yourself. One of his other teachings was that all the, of all the people in the world, we really have only one person, i.e. we have ourselves, that we're really responsible for. Even your own parents, your own children, you can't tell them what to do. You can tell them, you can try. Sometimes they'll listen, sometimes they won't. The problem is if you tell your mind what to do and it refuses to do it, especially if you tell it to do something good and your mind refuses to go along, then you've got a real problem. It's your own mind that you're responsible for. And so you make sure that it's in good shape. So the things that come out of the mind in terms of your thoughts and your words and your deeds are good for you and good for the people around you. As John Sawat would say, if you really love yourself, okay, you practice the Dharma. You're careful about what you do. You're heedful about what you do because you think about the consequences. As the Buddha said, all goodness in the heart comes from being heedful. Realizing that your actions do have consequences and you do have the choice. You can do something skillful, you can do something unskillful. There's lots of unskillful examples around, but there are skillful examples too if you look for them. So take care to look for the skillful examples and see, do your best to emulate them. And that way you stay centered inside, centered within yourself in a way that's good for you and good for the people around you.